Hey, welcome back. My name is Ed. Today I'm going to be going over my favorite and sometimes most used tools. These tools are going to be outside of your typical socket sets and pliers and things like that. These are more specialties, so it's not tools that I use all the time, but it is tools that I'm very grateful I have when I need them. All right, so this first tool is going to be a must have for most people, I believe. It's going to be this. It's a torque wrench. So let me show you one that's out of the box. Right here. Yeah, I love them so much, I got two of them. You said how many foot pounds a particular bolt needs to be torqued to, and then you can torque it to the exact specs that the manufacturer calls for. I use this probably 99% of the time. The only time I ever use this is on lug nuts. Uh, if you ever had to deal with driving your car and then realizing some of the lug nuts might be loose, or if you um, over tighten the lug nuts and you end up breaking a stud one day, this will help eliminate both those issues. So set it to your vehicle specs, whether it's like 80 foot pounds, 130 foot pounds, whatever it is, you set it and you just tighten all your lug nuts to that particular spec. A couple of days, just go around, just double check it and you're good to go. Never have to worry about snapping studs and never have to worry about um, loose lug nuts ever again. So I'll put links to these products in the description. Um, they'll probably be affiliate links. A dual action polisher. I use this thing quite often. And so I use it for, of course, polishing the paint of the car to um, make it shine and get rid of the scratches and stuff. You put a little compound on here and you polish it. It's a dual action. So instead of just spinning in a circle, it kind of goes like that on it so it doesn't burn your paint. But what this thing also works really great on is restoring headlights. You put a little compound on here, run it on your headlight, 30 seconds, your headlight looks brand new. And then if you wanna go one step further, you can go ahead and clear it, wet sand the clear, and polish the clear again with the same stuff. And that'll prevent it from yellowing. Or you just take this to it every six months when it starts getting yellow again, just shine it back up. All right, next is going to be a set of pliers, but it's not any set of pliers. Those little rubber bushings that hold the exhaust on. So those little rubber bushings, you use this, basically clamp on there, and it pops those bushings off your um, hangers on the exhaust. So if you ever need to take your exhaust off or lower it or whatever the case may be, these things are way easier than trying to do anything else. All right, this next one is called a smoke machine or smoke leak detector. I do have a video of me reviewing this um, a little while back. Well, not a very good quality video, but I still have the machine, I still use it, and I love it. So basically how this machine works is it just sends smoke out of this uh, tube thing. And so you stick this into a vacuum line and you can check for vacuum leaks with this machine. The cool thing is with this machine, you may not even know you have a vacuum leak. You can check your car and you might find one. And it may not be that bad yet where it's causing any major issues, but you can fix that stuff ahead of time by testing it with the smoke machine. If you're running a boosted situation, you wanna check for boost leaks, you put one of these on top of here, run this through the intake, and if you have any uh, boost leaks, you probably be able to figure out where it's coming from. Um, I did it on this car and actually found a boost leak and I was able to resolve it um, because of the smoke machine. Because I used this on my other car, I found a vacuum leak between the throttle body and the intake manifold that I did not know existed and would have never known if I didn't use this. Also, evap issues. You can put this into your gas tank nozzle. As long as you um, close the one solenoid off, you can pressure check with smoke whether you have any leaks in your fuel evap system. I 100% recommend this thing, especially if you got a car that's more than 10 years old and you do work on the car yourself. This next one, I admit, I haven't used it all that often. Um, I had to use it three times on the same car. It's one of those, once you have it, next time you need it, you're gonna be thankful that you already have it. For AC, a set of manifold gauges. Uh, this particular set came from Harbor Freight, but you can get them 
on Amazon, I think for about the same price, if not cheaper. So when checking your AC system and filling up your, um, your coolant stuff, your refrigerant, this is a must have. Yes, you can get those cans with little valve things already on it. So by having one of these, you can just use these smaller cans and save yourself some money. Um, because of cans with the little nozzle thing already built into it, those are like two, three, sometimes four times the price of these small cans. If you're gonna be replacing any part of the AC system where your refrigerant's gonna be completely empty, like a compressor or a line or something along those lines or some o-rings you're going to need to get one of these to vacuum out the system before you add in the refrigerant to it if you're going to be doing a complete system you can either rent one of these or buy one of these i wouldn't say that's a must-have because you don't use it very often but i just want to add it in there because it's part of the ac um if you get a set of gauges you might want to have the vacuum to go with it next up it's actually just a pry bar. I mean, this is old. I've used this so many times. It's actually from Walmart. It's actually held up pretty good. I'm kind of surprised. I'm surprised how often I've actually used this thing. And I've only got this one size and it's worked for everything I've needed to do. Next up is a multimeter. I like this particular one because it has a oscilloscope built in. It has like a full color display. Um, but not only does it do a multimeter, it's also an oscilloscope and that can be great for, you know, if you need to test a particular sensor, uh, it's really good for, um, setting the gain on your amplifier for your car stereos. One of those oscilloscopes are kind of pricey, but you can get a multimeter with a oscilloscope built in for a pretty reasonable price. Okay. Next is going to be tools I use for uh, wiring. I'm going to group a bunch of tools all in one. First thing is a nice pair of wire strippers. Uh, I'm not talking about the ones that you get at Walmart or the cheap ones where it does crimping and stripping. A dedicated set of strippers is really nice to have. They work a lot better than those um, combination thingies. Next is a dedicated crimper. These work a lot better than those little flat skinny thingies. Having a nice set of crimpers now, given this isn't nice anymore, I think I've left this one outside one too many times. So that works great on small wires. Now, when you go to bigger wires, you need a little bit of a different set of tools. So these are great for cutting bigger cables. So that's what I use these for. But you also, I also use them to strip them because I put the wire in there, clamp down, and I twist it, and I can strip the cables. So when would you be doing bigger wires where you need something like this? Uh, if you're adding an amplifier to the car, you're going to have bigger cables for that. If you want to build your own grounding kit, instead of spending extra money to get one pre-made, uh, you're going to need one of these. Um, if you're replacing your uh, battery cables, you need one of these unless you get a battery cable that's pre-made. In those situations, a lot of times you want to put nice uh, lugs on it. And that's where this comes into play. You put your lug end on there and you crimp down and this will do eight gauge, four gauge, two gauge, uh, one gauge, below one, get even thicker than one gauge. Um, this will do nice hefty wires and they're not that expensive. Um, let me show you an example where I use both these uh, tools from. So as you can see here, that is where I've used the tool. That's from my amp wire. This side actually I ordered pre-built from Battery Cable USA, but you can basically do the same thing um, with the tools, so you can save yourself some money. That said, if you're only gonna use it for like a ground, one ground, you can order the cable um, made to your specs for pretty cheap. But if you wanna do a full grounding kit, and or you wanna make it um, yourself, Definitely invest in the tools to do your own setup because then you can do all of them nice and pretty. Yay, we're on to the last tool. If you made it this far, cool. This is a tool that I did not think I was going to use very often, but I actually use it quite a bit. And um, I used it for all kinds of different things. But 
it's a way to measure smaller things. It's just a digital caliper. If you want to know the size of something, you can go and measure it. You can measure the inside of something over here, too. So you can use this for measuring bolts. So what I found more useful is, let's say you got a vacuum line and you need to get a new vacuum line because you found out your vacuum line has a small hole in it from when you used a smoke machine. You can use this, measure the inside diameter of the vacuum line. You can measure the outside diameter of the vacuum line. And now you know exactly what size holes you need. You, use a, you can use the same thing, measure the inside of the radiator hose, and then you can go measure the outside of the radiator hose. And so when you go to the parts store, you're 100% sure you're getting the right size hose you need. Anyway, that's all I got. Thank you for watching. Aloha. Peace out. Catch you in the next one. It is freaking hot in here. I am sweating. Ah. Uh.